Hello, my name is Josh Vigilo, and I'm the Director of Operations at Truth Exchange. Welcome to our second online symposium, Stolen Identity, the Theft of the Binary. A couple of housekeeping notes before we begin. If you're enjoying the, the content so far of this symposium, be sure to give us a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't already done so. That allows us to stay in touch with you and keep you updated with more free resources from Truth Exchange. You can also visit us online at www.truthexchange.com. We have two lectures today, The Rising Global Spirituality, The Search for Personhood by Carl Tykrib, and the second, which is by Pamela Frost, Soul and Identity, The Enneagram. Pamela Frost serves on the board of Truth Exchange. She contributes to the ministry through her writings, her research, as well as giving lectures and podcasting. On behalf of the Truth Exchange board and staff, thank you for joining us today. The title of my presentation is Stolen Identity, the Enneagram. And I'm going to look at the role the Enneagram plays in, stole, in stealing God's identity as the creator who is distinct from creation and humanity's identity as image bearers of the creator who is distinct from creation. So I'm going to examine the Enneagram's doctrines of God, of man, and of salvation from its inception within occultism all the way through its development as a popular personality type indicator. What we're going to find is that the Enneagram exchanges the truth of God for the lie and worships and serves the creature rather than the creator. So what is the Enneagram? It's a popular personality type indicator based on a complex geometric symbol that forms a nine-pointed star. Each point describes a different personality type characterized by the core fears and desires that are said to determine the way you think, feel, and behave. It's thus regarded as a tool of self-discovery, a kind of GPS for the soul that takes you on a deep plunge to the very center of yourself. It is, in fact, all about self. And the self that we're going to see emerging as we look at the Enneagram turns out to be the idol of the divine self. The Enneagram is a universal personality system, and thus claiming that everyone on the planet is born with an immutable Enneagram type that defines them for life. <clears throat> it's therefore considered a universal map of the soul with the power to unlock all the mysteries of the human psyche. It claims to reveal our true identity in order to help us grow relationally, emotionally, and spiritually in order to become the very best possible version of ourselves, thus promising harmony within marriages, families, societies, and even the world. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's on a utopian mission, and yes, the spirituality of the Enneagram is actually very religious, but it's the religion of oneism that's at war against God the Creator and against mankind created in His image. The scope of the Enneagram's influence spans the broad spectrum of culture, being used extensively in, business, in the business world for executive coaching, team building, and conflict revolution, and also for screening employees. It's also used in personal life coaching and in psychological counseling, and there's even an Enneagram prison project <clears throat> for the rehabilitation of inmates. It's also used extensively in K-12 through 12, 12 education, and some universities, including Stanford, offer coursework in the Enneagram. It's also making deep inroads into Christianity, being used by many Reformed and Evangelical churches, denominations, and mission agencies. In fact, the wife of an Orthodox Protestant minister who runs a popular Enneagram website recently taught a nine-hour online course on the Enneagram that was promoted to pastors, seminarians, and missionaries. So even Christians are turning to the wisdom of the Enneagram to figure out who they are and how they fit into the world with everyone else. So how did the Enneagram originate? The Enneagram didn't begin as a personality type indicator. 
It originally appeared as the symbol of the esoteric mystery school established by the Greek-Armenian occultist George Gurdjieff in the early 20th century. So what is a mystery school? Mystery schools attribute divinity to the universe and seek hidden knowledge through occult rituals, mediums, Spiritism and divination, all very dangerous spiritual practices clearly forbidden in scripture. Mystery schools divinize the universe and assert that man is not fallen and in need of redemption, but asleep to his inner divinity and in need of enlightenment to his original union within the divine cosmos. This principle has been expressed in the ancient uh, dictum of spiritual alchemy, as above, so below, which means man is a microcosm of the divine universe, which is the macrocosm. The identities of both God and man are therefore stolen and turned upside down. God is reduced to the impersonal energy of the divine cosmos and becomes a nature deity. And the value of individual persons created in the image of God disappears into the collective consciousness of cosmic unity. Spirituality becomes manipulation of the divine energies in man and the universe, which is the basis for witchcraft. Salvation is experienced as the mystical enlightenment of inner divinity because we just forgot we are God. The quest to transform humanity into divinity has been called the the great work or the magnum opus, and it's not only the foundation for occult mystery schools, but also for the Enneagram. George Gurdjieff, who introduced the Enneagram to to the West, was deeply involved in the occult and practiced spiritism, astrology, mental telepathy, uh, hypnotism, clairvoyance, table turning, and fortune telling, and he was also absolutely fascinated by demon possession. He introduced the Enneagram to the West in his Institute for the Harmonious Development of Man, which he established in Paris in 1922. The Institute was was dedicated to the great work of transforming humanity into divinity, which he called the fourth way, or simply the work. It's also called the Gurdjieff work. Gurdjieff claimed to have encountered the Enneagram through a secret brotherhood of Sufi mystics, which are Islamic mystics, who were using the Enneagram for numerological divination, by performing their twirling dervish dances along the interior lines of the Enneagram's geometric figures, they believed they were setting psychic energy in motion to evolve human consciousness into the, quote, oneness of the pearl of divinity, close quote. Gurdjieff then adopted the Enneagram as a symbol for his esoteric fourth way teaching which he described as the synthesis of and transcendence beyond the way of the fakir, the Islamic mystic, the way of the monk, the Christian mystic, and the way of the yogi, the Hindu mystic. So let's take a look at the Enneagram symbol itself. Gurdjieff believed that the geometry of the Enneagram, when set in motion, reveals a universal philosophical language, and that was a quote from him, a quote, universal philosophical language that unlocks the secrets to the eternal laws of the universe, making books and libraries entirely unnecessary. So according to Gurdjieff, the Enneagram holds the keys to unlock all knowledge, whether philosophical, scientific, or religious. The Enneagram symbol itself is made up of a triangle um, and a hexad overlaid to form a nine-pointed star within the circle. Each geometric shape represents a universal law derived by numerological divination. The The triangle represents the law of three that describes the trinity as three evolutionary forces that are both creating and sustaining the world through their perpetual motion. The hexad represents the law of seven or the law of octaves. 
signifying seven evolutionary forces at work that are striving to complete an ascending octave in man, which supposedly leads to reunion in the absolute, which is Gurdjieff's impersonal, unknowable divine cosmos. Though Gurdjieff only spoke of the laws of three and seven, referring to the evolutionary movement within the world and man, we shouldn't miss the fact that both occult laws are enclosed within the circle of one, which is depicted as um, the Ouroboros, the serpent biting its own tail. The Enneagram actually symbolizes the serpent encircling a pagan system based on the serpent's lie that forbidden knowledge leads to the realization of the divine self. In Gurdjieff's bizarre cosmology, the universe replaces God and creation is seen as a process of emanation out of the essence of the cosmos. It begins with the absolute, the one, represented by the circle that, that symbolizes the law of unity and non-duality. The absolute then emanated into six descending realms of heavenly bodies, ruled by increasing numbers of laws the further away they descend from the absolute. The earth is ruled by 48 laws, and the moon is ruled by 96 laws, being the lowest point on the spectrum of emanation. Gurdjieff taught that the moon is evolving into a planet that will become like the earth, and as it develops, it needs nourishment and is perpetually hungry. Man exists on, on earth in a mechanical state of spiritual sleep. The mechanical man has no soul. If he dies in this unevolved condition, he becomes food for the moon, which is sustained by feeding on the organic life of unenlightened humanity. The Gurdjieff work claims to transcend the mechanical state of the personal of personality by awakening inner self-remembering of one's divine essence. According to Gurdjieff, this process results in the crystallization of a developing soul that can then escape becoming food for the moon. But only a few ever attain such enlightenment, and Gurdjieff's disciple, Uspensky, says that's a good thing, because if, quote, all men were to become too intelligent, enlightened, they would not want to be eaten by the moon, close quote. If that happened, the moon would then starve and the entire cosmos would collapse within itself. Of course, this is complete nonsense, but without biblical vision, people really do perish under such foolishness. So what about the personality types? While Gurdjieff didn't develop nine personality types, he did actually lay the foundation that the Enneagram of personality would be built upon. It's all about the enduring struggle between essence and personality, what Gurdjieff called the search for being. According to Gurdjieff, man is born in essence, which is a spark of the divine within man. But by early childhood, a false personality of, of, of habitual and compulsive behavior has formed to obscure essence. He emphasized the need to develop an inner observer to help determine the way personality impedes self-remembering of one's divine essence. This oneist idea of the supposed struggle between essence and personality runs as the central theme through all, throughout, all the way through the development of the Enneagram of personality. I just want to take a minute here to look at the person of George Gurdjieff, because when you invert the identities of God and man, your ethics and morality of necessity are also going to be inverted. Gurdjieff actually believed that he was an enlightened master whose true essence was the divine within. He therefore developed a cult of personality around himself, exercising cultic control over his followers. He kept them in a perpetual state of uncertainty and therefore in a state of total dependence upon him. 
He often demeaned his followers uh, as different types of idiots in order to break down their psychological defenses. He held conventional morality in complete contempt and disregard and was known for his indulgence of lavish food, excessive drink, and beautiful women. In fact, he fathered several children out of wedlock with his female followers. His most famous, dis uh, his most famous disciple, Uspensky, finally left in disgust and described him as, quote, a fraud, a liar, a cheat, and a scoundrel. It's fitting that the last words Gurdjieff uttered to his students before he died were, I have left you in a fine mess. He really did. While Gurdjieff laid the foundation of the Enneagram symbol, the personality types have been attributed to the Bolivian occultist Oscar Ichazo. It's always going to be an occultist. As a child, Ichazo suffered terrifying out-of-body, near-death experiences, and as a young man, he sought answers and relief through the practices of shamanism, spiritism, astrology, yoga, Zen meditation, Sufism, Sufism, which is Islamic. Uh, which is Islamic mysticism, the Kabbalah, which is Jewish mysticism, and the I Ching, which is Chinese divination. And he also used psychedelic drugs for their purported spiritual benefits. He, he synthesized all of this occult knowledge with psychology and the Gurdjieff work and in the mystery school that he founded in Arica, Chile, Ichazo claimed to be an ascended master who received direct transmission of knowledge from his spirit guide, the archangel Metatron, the prince of the archangels. He was really in contact with demons who were appearing as angels of enlightenment. He also led his followers to come under the dark influence of demons. According to some of his students of the Arika school, a spirit called the Green Ketub was said to be the, quote, interior master of all Arikans, close quote. The Enneagram was an integral part of Ichazo's Arika training. He initially claimed to have learned it uh, from Sufi mystics in a monastery in Afghanistan, a story exactly paralleling that of Gurdjieff. He later changed his story, claiming he received the knowledge of the Enneagram by direct transmission from the archangel Metatron while under the influence of the psychedelic drug mescaline. Like Gurdjieff, Ichazo used the Enneagram for the metaphysical transformation of the false self of personality, meaning one's actual just normal self, into the mystical consciousness of divine essence. He explains it this way. We have to distinguish between man as he is in essence and as he is in ego or personality. In essence, every person is perfect, fearless, and in loving unity with the entire cosmos. There's no conflict within the person or between the person and others. Every human being starts in pure essence. Then something happens. The ego begins to develop. Karma accumulates. Man falls from essence into personality. So what about the personality types? Ichazo claimed his spirit guide, Metatron, instructed him to use the Enneagram as a diagram for evolution of consciousness from the false self of personality back to the true self of divine essence. So he developed the Enneagram of fixations, defining nine egotypes of the false personality, and he developed the corresponding Enneagrams of holy ideas representing, quote, facets of the eternal essence which can bring man to an experiential knowledge of his essential self, close quote. He also developed the Enneagram of passions to... <clears throat> Uh, to represent the traps the ego fixations get stuck in and the corresponding Enneagram of virtues that lead upward toward the holy ideas and realization of the essential self. For Ichazo, the Enneagram was not really about personality types, but a universal map for what he called 
a revolution of consciousness in which humanity unites as one body, becoming the Messiah, his word, that mediates the spiritual union of the cosmos. Okay, in other words, he's talking about the unification and realization of everyone and everything within the cosmos where both God and man disappear into oblivion of cosmic divinity, into the oblivion of cosmic dust. <clears throat> Nevertheless, you'll find Ichazo's system of fixations, holy ideas, passions, and virtues underlying the popular Enneagram of personality. I also want to take a look at Ichazo's moral compass uh, because he, like Gurdjieff, rejected the Judeo-Christian worldview with its biblical morality and ethics. He specifically discouraged exclusive sexual unions among his followers and encouraged radical sexual freedom. He also did uh, something really odd, but it's actually in fitting with this bizarre worldview between personality and essence. He separated all the children from the, the parents in his Eureka school, placing them in child care centers where all Arikans were supposed to help raise them. And this was done in order to keep the children in essence as long as possible before the egoic personality could form through the influence of the parents. It's always the parents' fault, right? The children were also trained daily in Ichazo's occult spiritual exercises, which is a frightening thing to think of somebody being raised in that. So I think you can get a good picture of the esoteric, psycho-spiritual, sexual context in which the Enneagram of personality types began to develop. But it was actually the Chilean psychiatrist and occultist Claudio Naranjo who filled in the details of the personality types, adding nine of Freud's defense mechanism to the Enneagram. Naranjo was also a seeker of occult knowledge and a prominent leader in what's called transpersonal psychology because of his integration of Western psychology with Eastern spirituality and psychedelic drugs. Transpersonal psychology integrates the science of psychology with esoteric with esoteric spirituality in order to transcend the creator-creation distinction, thereby shifting human identity from individuals created in the image of God to the interconnected human collective pulsating with the energy of the divine cosmos. The spirit medium Gene Houston, who Peter often refers to, describes Naranjo as, quote, a man who encompasses the capital R realities from the scientific to the shamanic. In the 1960s, Naranjo was a research psychiatrist at the University of Chile Medical Center in um, Medical School in Santiago, where he integrated psychedelic drugs into his psychotherapy practice. He experimented with both ayahuasca used by South American shamans, and, I, and, and Ibogaine used by West African witch doctors. Both are powerful hallucinogens said to open the portals of the mind for direct contact with the spirit world. Naranjo described hallucinogens as the threshold to the mystic's enlightenment into universal truths at the core of religious mysteries. In other words, he believed that psychedelic drugs awakened universal consciousness as the ground to transcend religious distinctions. Naranjo moved to the U.S. in the late 1960s and became a leader with the Esalen Institute in Big Sur, California, which is known as the Center for the Human Potential Movement and for Transpersonal Psychology. The human potential movement is based on attaining self-actualization through humanistic psychology. And transpersonal psychology fills in the spiritual void by turning to the occult. The goal of both is self-realization. 
Esalen is known for its synthesis of psychotherapy, psychedelic drugs, free sex, and mystical spirituality, and was instrumental in promoting the cultural revolution of the 1960s and 70s. In 1970, Naranjo spent several months studying with Ichazu in the Arika school, but he left his training early, believing it was incomplete, and they also didn't really get along all that well. He claims that, the, that, he claims that the clearly defined Enneagram types, as he calls them, were later revealed to him by automatic writing, which means they were channeled through him from the spirit world. Naranjo believed that the enneotypes, as he called them, are means of self-realization and even for what he called, quote, contact with an angelical level of existence, close quote. So, Naranjo, like Ichazo, was in contact with and receiving inspiration and guidance for the development of the personality types from the spirit world. And he, like Gurdjieff and Ichazo, guarded the occult secrets of the Enneagram, revealing them only to an inner elite circle of his followers, who were sworn to secrecy. So how did the Enneagram go from the domain of esoteric mystery schools to the public domain of, pers of the Enneagram of personality? Naranjo began teaching the Enneagram to private groups <clears throat> at, the Ensla, at the Esalen Institute in 1971, where he required students to sign pledges of secrecy, and he swore them to keep the Enneagram secret. It was not intended to be a popular personality type indicator, but a tool for evolution of consciousness. Enter the Jesuits. Jesuit priest Bob Oakes was in Naranjo's first class at Esalen, and he received permission from Naranjo to teach the Enneagram in Jesuit retreat houses. This is where Jesuit novitiate Don Richard Risso learned the system, became so enamored with it that he could not resist publishing a book on it, thus taking it public. He later founded or he later co-founded the Enneagram Institute with Russ Hudson, who was a student of the Gurdjieff work and a faculty member of the Esalen Institute. The Enneagram Institute quickly became <clears throat> one of the most highly respected depositories of Enneagram wisdom, and its influence even crossed over into the evangelical world because of its Enneagram certification program. So, that means it became spiritually neutral from that, uh, that point on, right? Not exactly. Risso and Hudson just continued advancing the same esoteric meaning of the Enneagram. In their popular book, The Wisdom of the Enneagram, The Complete Guide to Psychological and Spiritual Growth for the Nine Personality Types, they describe the Enneagram as, quote, a condensation of universal wisdom, the perennial philosophy that contains components from mystical Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Taoism, and Buddhism, close quote. The perennial philosophy asserts that all religions become one on the ground of their shared mystical experience. According to Risso and Hudson, the Enneagram is a guide to self-observation and self-inquiry that helps us wake up to the light of divinity that shines within every individual. For them, the personality types function as a process, a kind of spiritual excavation, digging past the outer structures of the personality in order to recover the true self of divine essence. So they're essentially still preaching Gurdjieff. Nothing has really changed. Yet through the Enneagram Institute, the Enneagram pretty much went viral, and it became the premier center and the Enneagram Institute became the premier center for training and certification in the Enneagram, drawing even some evangelicals to its training. Uh, notably, Ruth Haley Barton, who had been on staff at Willow Creek with um, John Ortberg, uh, received her certification in the Enneagram through the Enneagram Institute. 
I also want to look at the Franciscan priest Richard Rohr. He was also initiated into the Enneagram as it made its way through the Jesuit retreat houses. He wrote the book, The Enneagram, A Christian Perspective, that was aimed entirely and specifically at a Christian audience. However, Rohr's version of Christianity is anything but biblical. He is actually a thoroughgoing oneist who believes the universe and everything in it emanated out of the Christ at the Big Bang. In an interview with Monsignor Nolan of the Catholic Corner, Rohr stated, quote, the Christ is born the, mo the moment God decides to show himself, the moment God decides to materialize. Now, modern science would call that the Big Bang. That's the cosmic Christ. In Rohr's book, The Universal Christ, he asserts that, quote, the Christ mystery represents the indwelling of divine presence in everyone and everything since the beginning of time, close quote. Therefore, Rohr is emphatic when he repeatedly insists that you don't need to put personal faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior because you're already carrying the divine DNA you're already the Christ. This is a very clear denial of the person and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. And 1 John 2.22 John says, Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. So what's his view of the Enneagram? Rohr teaches the Enneagram as one of the clearest ways to teach non-dualistic thinking, with its goal of dismantling the separate self of the ego of personality so it can fall into the great self of God, by which he means divine essence. He believes the Enneagram is a psycho-spiritual tool that shifts consciousness Away from, dualistic, away from the dualistic mindset of Bible quotations and moralistic value judgments toward the non-duality of creation spirituality and Native American Indian spirituality. In fact, Richard Rohr has participated in uh, Native American sweat lodge ceremonies that are designed to contact the spirit world. He, in fact, is another occultist. And as such, Rohr sees the utopian potential for the Enneagram to eliminate religious distinctions. Since the Enneagram is considered a universal map of the soul with the power to unlock the psyche of every person on the planet, he sees the Enneagram as a kind of lingua franca, a universal language that serves as the meeting ground for the advancement of intercultural and interreligious dialogue towards synthesis of psychologies, philosophies, and religions. And it's not surprising to find Gurdjieff lurking in the details of Rohr's Center for Action and Contemplation in Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, which he, uh, he, he describes his center as a, quote, school of the soul, close quote. Scary thought. Uh, one of CAC's course offerings for the soul is taught by core faculty member Cynthia Bergolt, who is a longtime student of the Gurdjieff work, and she teaches the Enneagram's occult law of three at um, Rohr's Center for Action and Contemplation. So, we need to ask whether there is ever a spirituality, uh, a spiritually neutral version of the Enneagram. That would be the assertion of many Christians who practice the Enneagram. There's a growing number of Christians who claim to present the Enneagram from a biblical perspective. But the most prominent and esteemed Enneagram teachers are all hardcore New Age occultists. <clears throat> so where do Christians turn for their Enneagram training? One prominent Christian Enneagram teacher claims to have trained with the very best Enneagram experts, but it turns out 
all these experts are hardcore New Agers. Here's a, a, a list of some of the experts. The six-month course, <clears throat> the Enneagram for Healing Practitioners that was offered by the Shift Network, several courses with Catherine Fovra, a leader in Enneagram teaching, and affiliation with Gin Ginger Lapid Bogda <clears throat> of the Enneagram and Business Network. The course, the Enneagram for Healing Practitioners, is offered by the Shift Network. <clears throat> so what on earth is the Shift Network? This is from their vision statement. Our vision is to empower a global network of evolutionary change agents through media, education, and resources featuring leading wisdom keepers and visionaries. The site goes on to state that their ultimate goal is to, quote, upgrade our human operating system in order to co-create a healthy, peaceful, sustainable, just, and prosperous world. Their assertion that you, can up, that you can change the human operating system follows the course of what's called transhumanism, which believes we can attain divinity and immortality by integrating human consciousness with artificial intelligence in direct defiance of God who says the wages of sin is death. Since the shift network is busy mobilizing a network of evolutionary change agents, that intend to upgrade our human operating system, I want to take a quick look at some of the courses offered by the SHIFT Network. Sacred Evidence-Based Mediumship. Intentional Dreaming with European B Shamanism. Shamanic Lucid Dreaming. Exploring the cosmic mind through psychedelics. Heal yourself with a secret language of plant spirits. Energy healing with the divine mothers of darkness and light. Visionary activist astrology. God, sex, and enlightenment. Spiritual evolution through the Enneagram, which is one of 16 occult courses they offer on the Enneagram in addition to their course on the Enneagram for healing practitioners. The Shift Network's course, The Enneagram for Healing Practitioners, is taught by four of their evolutionary change agents, Russ Hudson, Helen Palmer, David Daniels, and Jessica Dibb. So let's take a look at what they believe. Russ Hudson is on the faculties of both the Esalen Institute and the Shift Network, both centers of hardcore New Age One of Spirituality. He was a student of the Gurdjieff work and later learned the personality types through the work of <clears throat> Ichazo. His book, The Wisdom of the Enneagram, which is co-authored with Don Risso, says that within each person is a spark of the divine. But our problem is we have fallen asleep to our true nature, to our divine essence. Hudson describes the Enneagram as a sacred psychology and points to, that points to a universal spirituality in order to remember ourselves in divine essence. He, de he describes the personality types as nine gateways to presence by which he means our divine essence. Helen Palmer, who's now retired, was also on the faculties of both the, in the Esalen Institute and the Shift Network. She was trained in the Enneagram by Claudio Naranjo and also drew heavily from the work of both Gurdjieff and Oscar Ichazo. She taught the Enneagram as a sacred technology, believing the nine types to be teachers, I should say, quote, believing the nine guides to be, quote, teachers and guides to the higher states of consciousness that transcend the personal self, <clears throat> close quote, in order to experience universal consciousness in the divine essence. Dr. David Daniels, MD, now deceased, was a psychiatrist at the, uh, at, <clears throat> He was a psychiatrist who taught at Stanford's medical school, and he was also of, on the faculty of the Shift Network. He was introduced to the Enneagram by Helen Palmer and taught it as a tool to recall and recover the fundamental principle of the self that was obscured by the development of the personality. 
among the truths Dr. Daniels says the Enneagram can recover are such oneist aphorisms as the following. We are all one and perfect as we are. At the core, everyone has a deep and complete connection to all others in all things. We all begin with faith in ourselves, in others, and in the universe. We are inherently innocent and can naturally <clears throat> sense truth. Jessica Dibb is also on the faculty of the network, of the SHIFT network. She is the founder and spiritual director of the Inspiration Consciousness School, which is dedicated to, quote, a higher integrated model of psycho-spiritual healing and development to support self-actualization, close quote. In 2017, she was joined by Claudio Naranjo and Russ Hudson in teaching the Shift Network course, The Enneagram of Essence. The goal of the course was to awaken higher consciousness of the sacred, the divine, and I'm quoting here, the quote, sacred, divine, God, source, spirit, the one, it is your essence, the divine uniquely expressed within you. Catherine Fover trained with Helen Palmer, David Daniels, Don Risso, and Russ Hudson. She also studied with both Oscar Ichazo and Claudio Naranjo, and bases her Enneagram tri-type system on Gurdjieff's three centers of head, heart, and gut, the foundation of his fourth way teaching. She also teaches that the real inner dimension of the personality types can only be understood through Gurdjieff's esoteric laws of three and seven, practiced within the circle, which is the law of one. Jinjalapid Bogda is the head of the Enneagram and Business Network and a prominent Enneagram coaching site that's focused on introducing the Enneagram to the workplace. She was trained in the Enneagram at the Esalen Institute in the course she took by Helen Palmer. According to her article, Spirituality in the Workplace, her real goal in business coaching is to shift spirituality from, quote, dualistic thinking, close quote, to non-dual consciousness in which all is perceived as one. But she doesn't use a direct approach, knowing that she would get resistance if people understood she was teaching religion in the workplace. So what she does instead is she trains people in the Enneagram of personality, believing it will naturally, quote, transport people into the spiritual arena of holistic rather than dualistic perspective, close quote. So she uses the Enneagram as a tool to shift consciousness from, the God, from God as the creator, who is distinct from creation, to little g, God, as the divine energy within everyone and, and, and everything. Okay, I want to say here that while all of these Enneagram teachers are hardcore New Age occultists who teach self-realization instead of salvation, I have to give the benefit of the doubt to the believers who are studying the Enneagram with them, uh, assuming that they actually don't understand what any of these people actually mean or are teaching in regard to the Enneagram. I doubt they actually have taken the time to look into their worldview and, and look at their websites in the full view of what they really are about. But at the same time, it's hard to imagine immersing yourself under their training without having at least some inkling that they might be teaching something that is at least a little bit antithetical to the, Bi to the Bible, if not outright teaching the doctrines of demons. Since the Enneagram is considered a universal map of the soul that even many Christians are following, we need to ask what spirit is charting the, its map and where is that spirit taking us? To find the answers, I want to return to Claudio Naranjo. 
Once the Enneagram was out of its secretive box, Naranjo came to believe that the spirituality of the Enneotypes, as he called them, would become useful for educators in completely redefining Western education by creating, quote, an experiential curriculum that embraces both the emotional and instinctive dimension of the psyche, close quote. In his book, Healing Civilization, Naranjo insists that the traditional model of Western education based in Judeo-Christian principle of educating the mind is a relic of patriarchy, is a relic of patriarchy that must be replaced by a new educational paradigm of what he calls integrative education based on feelings, emotions, and bodily sensations rooted in the ancient spirituality of shamanism. This is what he teaches. This is what his book, Healing Civilization, is about. He sees in, Gur in, he sees in Gurdjieff's fourth way the prescient foreshadowing, foreshadowing. He sees in Gurdjieff's fourth way the prescient foreshadowing of this shift in Western consciousness that manifested as a shamanic zeitgeist in the 60s and 70s, evidenced by what he calls psychedelic consciousness and the rise of Eastern spiritual traditions, among which would be the ever so popular and entrenched in West, Western culture um, practices of yoga and mindfulness meditation. So despite its deeply occult roots and its shamanic mission to shift Western consciousness, the Enneagram continues <clears throat> to gain popularity as a personality type indicator even among Christians. And by just practicing the Enneagram's personality system, one actually unavoidably navigates around its three geometric shapes that Gurdjieff that represent Gurdjieff's occult laws of numerological divination. This isn't just a case of eating food sacrificed to idols, but it actually represents unwitting participation in the Enneagram's occult rituals, as Catherine Fovra actually makes very clear when she explains that the only way to really understand the depths of the types is through the lens of Gurdjieff's occult laws of three and seven. The Enneagram also seems to have a kind of addictive power, creating dependence on its inward journey to the self rather than leading to redemption and the real freedom we have in Jesus Christ. The Enneagram is a humanistic, esoteric counterfeit of the person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a distraction from true sanctification for believers, and it's a deadly trap for unbelievers. And we need to look, we need to ask, what if, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world seemingly by practicing the Enneagram, but in the end loses his soul. I think one of the greatest dangers posed by the Enneagram is the fact that it actually seems to work. It seems like it explains everything about you and everybody else, so that you're equipped to successfully navigate life. But really, it's a process of the flesh trying to inf improve the flesh that eventually leads to eternal death unless people repent of their sin through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. One example that sticks in my mind is <clears throat> the Enneagram Prison Project, which te teaches prisoners the Enneagram towards their rehabilitation. I've watched many of their videos in which inmates give glowing testimony of what comes across to me uh, as essentially their salvation by Enneagram. In video after video, they claim the Enneagram has completely set them free from the negative thoughts, feelings, and behaviors that landed them in prison in the first place. And they sing its praises as the deliverer that will keep them out of prison forever once they're released. So what is profoundly missing in the Enneagram Prison Project is repentance from sin before God through saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, the Enneagram has become a substitute savior 
that actually leads people away from seeing their need for repentance and regeneration in Christ because it claims the power to solve everything in your life. Contrast the, en the Enneagram's empty promise of realization of your very best self with a biblical call to repentance and regeneration and sanctification through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. When we place faith in Jesus' perfect, righteous life, his atoning death, and his bodily resurrection, we are brought into union with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and made new creatures in Christ. We have been transferred out from under the dominion of darkness into the kingdom of God's beloved Son. We are fully justified and fully forgiven of our sin. We are made righteous in Christ. We are given a spirit of, of adoption by which we cry out, Abba, Father, in intimate personal relationship with our Creator and Redeemer. We no longer are in Adam and under the curse of sin but we have been completely made new, given a new identity and made righteous in the Lord Jesus Christ. And God's purpose in lavishing such blessings upon us is that we would be conformed to the image of Christ who is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his nature, and he upholds all things by the word of his power. The practical side of sanctification is also restoring God's image within us, that is also restoring God's image within us, is explained in Ephesians 4, 20 through, is, is explained in Ephesians 4, 20 through 24, where we are exhorted to put off by faith the old identity in Adam with its corruption and through the lusts of deceit, and to put on faith <clears throat> and to put on by faith our new identity in Jesus Christ, quote, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth, close quote, Ephesians 4.24. In fact, 1 Peter 2.9 reveals the breathtaking truth that if we are in Christ we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession so that we may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hebrews 12, two, uh, 12, 1 and 2 exhorts us to consider the testimony of the faithful saints who have gone before us and thereby lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us so we can run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, oh, at, at the right hand of the throne of God. I want to encourage believers to please widen your understanding of the Enneagram far beyond its personal appeal as a personality type indicator that seems to work and solve all your relational problems. But the real purpose of the Enneagram is to steal the identities of both God and man. Shifting consciousness from belief in the creator who is distinct from us to participation in the universal consciousness of inner divinity by which man becomes self-realized as divine. The Enneagram is in reality a spiritual thief. It's an imposter, an angel of enlightenment that climbs up by another way as Jesus warned in John 10, 1. Thank you.